Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Access. In this module, I want to show you how you can put a test in your tables to check that people enter the correct dates. I also want to show you what happens if you do not put a data type to date time and then want to use it as a date. There's going to be a few things crop up if you do that. But first of all, let's have a look at this table on the screen. So we've got a field saying date joined and a field saying date checked. Now what I don't want to happen is you can't have the date checked date happening before somebody's joined. So if I for example put that to February you can't check that person's records before they've joined. I don't want that to happen. So what you need to do is I'll do, if I just put this back to March so it doesn't trigger an issue. You need to go into design on this. So I'm going to design and you need to activate the property sheet for the table. And then like you do with fields. So if I click into some of these fields, date fields, you've got validation rule for the field and validation text for the field. But through the property sheet, you've also got that for the actual for the actual table itself so you've got validation rule there and validation text so that's what I want to fill in these three ellipses if you click on that gives you this expression box so and then we want to say so date checked will be greater or equals to date joined that's the sort of test and then if I click OK to that that puts it on that line and then whatever you want to come up on the screen you put in this line validation text so if I put um, check date must be after joined date or something like that and then if I save this and then have a have a look it's telling me there that the rules have changed it might impact some of the text that I've already got in there yes have a look so at the minute it hasn't um, triggered an error message but if I change that to February now like I did before what should happen here when I tab off date check this box comes up this is what I put on the validation text line this comes up and tells me that I've made a mistake click OK and then you would have to correct that mistake because it won't let you get off this record if you don't so now I've corrected that mistake and it lets me off this record. Now you'll notice that I've got a field here called test. I'll just put some a date in there, but it sits on the left hand side of this field, whereas this date and this date sits on the right hand side. The reason for that is, is these two fields are date time fields, whereas this one, even though I've typed a date in there, is a text field. And that's how you can see. Now that can cause a bit of a problem with uh, doing calculations in access if you've got the wrong data type in older versions of access you'd come up and get a data type mismatch warning coming up but it's still even the modern versions it still comes up with problems or error messages or it says error if you try and do certain things with it so I want to just have a quick look at what I've done in design so it's just short text you can see that where are these these two are date time now I'm going to create a query on this table so create query design and then I'm just going to drag the staff table on and then if I double click um, on this box at the top the whole thing goes pink drag and drop the lot in there for now don't need this property sheet I don't need this either so you've got the fields down here so a normal query when you want to do a query on dates if the computer or access recognize the field is a date what it will do is it will put hashes around it so if I put this is date checked by staff so if I if I put um, let's have a quick look at the dates date checked everything at, after 2021 20, greater than 2021 so if I go back in there all you do is do the greater than sign and then I'll do the first of the first 21 now when I click away from that you see it puts these little hashes around it that means it's recognizing this field as a date field and then when you run that you get the answer there that's everybody if I change that to 
22. Run that again. I only get one person, but it's working. It's doing the job. Now, if I come back and get rid of that for a minute. So all the date functions and functionality will be available on these two fields. Now, this one that has actually got a date in it, if I put um, greater than the first of the first 21, when I click away from that, you don't get the hashes, so it's not recognizing that as a date field. You've got the little quotes around it. If I run it, in the modern version, it still works. But that doesn't mean this is a good practice to do, because if I now go and do a different type of formula, not a query, not a question as such, but a formula, let's go in here. I'll call this... Um, duration or something like that colon now I can't really see what I'm doing so I'm going to use my shift key and F2 which will zoom that box up so what I want to put in there is date checked in square brackets minus in square brackets date joined now that should work because they're both date fields and date fields are just numbers. If I click OK to that and then run that, it comes up with an answer. It doesn't make much sense at the moment, but that's that's an answer. There's no error messages there. Now, if I use this field, if I wanted to know that test between date checked and test as a calculation, if I go back into there, if I just change, um, let's just zoom this up again, Shift F2. So, date checked minus date joined, uh, by test I'll do, minus test, that'll do, okay, it lets you do it, when you run that, you get the error message, because that is not a date field, and it doesn't like it, so it's not good practice to do that, even though in the modern versions of Access it is actually working, earlier versions of Access that would have come up with an error data type mismatch, uh, anyhow, but let's go back and get rid of that. So I just want to show you what the implications are of things like this. Now on these other fields, you can use the between and and query. You can also use a between and and query with a parameter query. So if I just do that one just to show you, so if I go Shift F2 so I can see what I'm doing. So it's going to be between is the word. And then the parameter query is triggered by a square bracket, which you need to do a prompt that's going to come up on the screen. So enter the first date is what I'm going to put, square bracket, and then you do the and, square bracket, enter the second date. So when you, whatever you put here cannot be a duplicate of the actual field name, so don't put date checked or some date joined like that because it will get confused, didn't like that. If I click OK to that, now when you run this, the parameter box comes up, with that prompt, so you type, so if I go, I'm on the date, first of the first 20, and first of the first 22, let's go for that one, it's only one person, if I go back into design, run it again, different set of dates, first of the first 16, and first of the first 20, two people. And this is working because the between and and is picking up whatever dates you put in those parameter boxes. And the dates are displaying as a result of the query. So basically that's all I wanted to talk about on this little video. So you've done the properties at a table to stop you entering incorrect dates in this date check column. That was the first thing we did. On the property sheet there this date validation and then we had a quick look at what happens with date fields in queries that you should really be seeing the hash key when you do a, a criteria for a query if you're seeing quotes it's seeing that as a text field which means you've got to change it in here to date and time and then you'll get the right answer same thing will occur with currency and number fields if you've left them on text and you try to do a calculation, it's going to come up with a data type mismatch or uh, error message. So hopefully that was of use for you. Thank you for your time and I'll see you in the next one.